My name is Al Denise Ewing, and I'm a doctoral candidate at the University of South Florida Community and Family Health Department. So the purpose of my research study was to describe cancer-related risk behaviors of recreational sport athletes, 18 to 49. Long term, the hope is that this study might actually reduce cancer risk-related lifestyle behaviors among recreational sport athletes, 18 to 49. So uh, when I present, um, either as I presented my proposal or as I move forward to present uh, the context of the research study that I conducted, I like to begin with this slide. So some of you may be familiar or may recognize some of the individuals on that slide. So there are two similarities among this indi these individuals. One is the number of Olympic gold medals that each of them hold. And two is the fact that despite their stellar performance on an international level, each of these individuals have battled cancer. I present this slide to present the context that athletes are not invincible to chronic disease conditions. And furthermore, although we are looking at a slide depicting um, cancer survivors or those who have succumbed to cancer um, at a professional level, the most common athlete is the recreational sport athlete. Just to give you a little bit more context, so the American Cancer Society suggests that health occurs in a community context. So a particular interest to me was exploring a little bit more of this context um, as I seek to further my career as a, a public health or chronic disease preventionist. And of particular interest to me was looking at the community context of recreational sport athletes and that environment of recreational sports. So what the literature does present on athletes uh, which tends to exclude recreational athletes and looks more at, at either high school athletes or either professional athletes, is that athletes do engage in risky behavior. So these do include less seatbelt use, less helmet use, uh, being less likely to consume healthy foods, and also less likely to engage in safer sex practices. Uh, particularly as it relates to recreational sporting events, these environments tend to support higher consumption of social alcohol and tobacco use, the potential for illicit drug use, consumption of unhealthy foods, and, and unrelated to cancer, but also a potentially risky health behavior, more physical fighting. So as I move forward in presenting uh, more on my particular research study, something of importance to consider is that the initiation of prevention behaviors earlier in adulthood is particularly important for reducing the lifetime cancer risk. Specifically, as it relates to cancer, I'll be focusing on the primary level of prevention, which would include a focus on looking at obesity, physical inactivity or physical activity levels, nutrition consumption, alcohol consumption, tobacco use, and routine doctor visits. So there was one specific aim of my research study, and that's to identify the cancer risk-related behaviors, knowledge, and intention to screen among adult recreational sport athletes. I will also insert that this study was guided by the theoretical, uh, the theoretical framework of a theory of planned behavior. So there are two research questions. The first was to look at the distribution of cancer risk-related behaviors, knowledge, and intention to screen among adult recreational sport athletes, 18 to 49. And the second question um, was to assess whether or not there were differences by race and gender in cancer risk-related behaviors, knowledge, and intention to screen among adult recreational sport athletes 18 to 49. There are a couple of operational definitions that I think it's important to clarify as I move forward in my study, uh, presenting uh, preliminary or results of my study, and that's that when I refer to a recreational sport, I'm referring to a competitive physical game, such as basketball or baseball, that's played for fun as opposed to professionally. And also when I refer to the athlete, I'm referring to a person who voluntarily engages in that particular game, um, such as basketball or baseball, for fun as opposed to professionally. So data were collected via online and in-person recruitment methods. Um, particularly, I um, began recruitment uh, for my study utilizing social media sites. So Facebook, um, Instagram, joining sports groups um, who catered to athletes and, and um, sharing the study information, how to um, engage with the study, so forth and so on. Uh, consistently in order to increase my recruitment efforts. The study itself was a web-based survey that I used Qualtrics uh, for design and implementation. Excellent tool I would um, definitely recommend for anyone looking to implement survey methodology. And then most important, 
Um, items for the survey were adapted and adopted from nationally validated and reliable instruments, including the Health Information National Trend Survey, the Behavioral Risk Factor Surveillance System, National Health Information Survey, other published instruments, including the Mayo Clinic's instrument to assess knowledge that was implemented in Jacksonville, and then a few original items. There were a few eligibility criteria. Of particular importance was participation in recreational sports um, at a, in a current level. So the, the question asks, on average, how many times per month do you engage in recreational sports? All of those who selected none were excluded from the study. It was also important that individuals fell within the age range of 18 to 49. So many of the guidelines for cancer screening do begin at age 50. However, we are seeing for specific populations who are more at risk, particularly African American men as it relates to colorectal cancer, that age is being moved down to 45 um, as agencies like the American Cancer Society begin to advocate for earlier screening. It was also important that participate, uh, participants spoke English in order to complete the survey, that they identified as male, female, or transgender, and that they had never been diagnosed with cancer. So results were analyzed using SPSS version 25. As I move forward in the presentation, you will notice either one asterisk or two. A single asterisk will represent significance by either race or gender. Double asterisks will represent significance by both race and gender. I will also add that um, continued analyses will um, also assess differences by age. So just taking a look at a few of the demographic characteristics of the sample. On average, participants were 32, uh, almost 32 years of age. There was also almost an equal split between male and females. Uh, the sample size itself, um, after data cleaning, and I'll talk a little bit about that later, was 712 participants. Um, thanks to the CISP grant, I was, in a, I was able to increase the diversity of my sample using other recruitment methods were particularly important and I think will speak, speak to a strength and limitation of the study um, using recruitments of social media. Um, but the breakdown by race, uh, which here you will see refers to non-Hispanic, black, or African-American. Here it refers to non-Hispanic white, and then another population um, where other individuals of various racial ethnic backgrounds um, were included here. Also, um, the sample size itself presented with um, less than a four, um, more than half presented with less than a four-year degree, and also most of the participants were insured by um, some type of healthcare insurance. As far as income level breakdowns, it's almost a, a third, a third, a third by each of the categories. Um, most of the participants, or 67%, were not married. Only 45 presented with a family history of cancer or reported a family history of cancer. And 65.2% were employed full time. So as I shared, um, Knowledge was assessed using a previously validated instrument implemented by the Mayo Clinic in Jacksonville. There were 12 items that cons uh, comprised or made up the knowledge assessment tool. And here I am reporting um, general percentages of those participants who answered correctly to each of these questions. Um, and here I've also bolded or wanted to just highlight a couple of questions. And that those are the questions where less than 50% of the population correctly answered in response to the question. And so here the question bolded is, do you think that not eating many fruits or vegetables can increase a person's chance of developing cancer? And on the second slide, also related to nutrition, was um, a lower percentage of participants who reported knowing that, or reporting correctly that, do you think that not eating enough fiber can increase a person's chance of developing cancer? So I thought that these two questions related to nutrition were particularly interesting among the population. As it related to actual fruit and vegetable consumption, um, you'll note here, so on the previous slide, you will note an asterisk uh, depicting significance by both race and gender. And then here on the fruit and, ve uh, fruit and vegetable slide, you will notice a single asterisk. So in terms of fruit consumption here, African Americans were, or non-Hispanic blacks were more likely to report um, a higher consumption of fruits in comparison to Caucasians or whites. So I thought that that was of particular interest. And as it related to vegetable consumption, there was no significance as it related to either gender or race. So according to guidelines, the recommendation is that individuals consume 
uh, one and a half to two cu cups or more of, of fruits and two to three cups of vegetables. So you, that's why you will see the bolding um, to represent the number of participants who are actually meeting those guidelines, meeting or exceeding. As it relates to alcohol consumption, I know that this is a little bit difficult for you to see, but here on the left, you will see a reporting of individuals based on days of consuming at least one drink. So these results were also significant by race and gender with uh, males or men reporting uh, more days of consuming at least one drink in comparison to women. Also as it relates to binge drinking, which is consuming five or more drinks for men, four or more for women, uh, results were statistically significant based on race. With uh, blacks or non-Hispanic blacks being more likely to report higher days of binge drinking among men and women. As it relates to tobacco use, so overall, a high majority of the participants reported no engagement with either smoking cigarettes, e-cigs, or tobacco snuff or snus, which was um, a very positive result. However, when I looked at engagement in um, everyday use, results were statistically significant for consumption or using uh, cigarette use um, among men being more likely to report everyday use, and also white males being more likely to report everyday use. However, as it relates to e-cigs and vaping products, um, blacks were more likely to report um, everyday use as well as men. Sun protection. Um, so in terms of meeting guidelines or recommendations for applying sunscreen use when going outside for more than an hour, you'll see that only 10% of the sample reported to always um, always apply sun protection. These results were also statistically significant based on race and gender, with women being more likely to apply sun protection in comparison to men, and then African Americans being more likely to report always using sun protection in comparison to Caucasians. Um, and then also as it relates to um, the potential to engage in cancer screening, um, the literature supports that going for routine checkups is a um, significant predictor of also uh, complying with recommendations for routine screening. So I, I, I um, included this question on the survey and results were significant but only based on gender, um, with women being more likely to report um, going for a routine checkup within the past year in comparison to men. My outcome variable for my dissertation study, um, which will be assessed using multi, or was assessed using multivariate linear regression, was intention to screen. So intention to screen was assessed using three variables, or the average score was taken using three variables, each of them with the same root, um, but different base here. And so um, participants were able to respond on a scale of zero to 10, whether they were extremely unlikely or extremely likely to engage or to get screened for cancer when recommended by a healthcare professional. The mean score um, was 7.26, and scores were not significantly different based on race or gender. Um, as it relates to um, bivariate analyses, knowledge scores were significantly correlated with intention. So there are a few strengths and limitations that I will highlight from this study. Uh, the first is the importance to stress um, as we look to prevent various cancers that underserved populations or many populations are now facing or at more at risk for. It's important to engage in a social and a community contest, uh, context for reach. I also found that recruitment via social media um, was a successful strategy here. I was able to recruit, recruit over half of the sample um, without offering an incentive. And actually at the point that I was able to offer an incentive to increase my sample size, I actually experienced um, a high number of bots or spammers who began to take the survey hoping that they could simply access the gift card that was being offered. And so um, careful data monitoring, even using the online survey tool, was very important. And thankfully, I was able to catch that within a day um, and able to uh, completely take down the survey links that had been posted online. So that's definitely a potential concern for anyone looking to use social media sites uh, for recruitment and, and also data collection. I was able to capture a wide range of data items um, through my survey. I do have over 80 um, different items that were asked 
of participants um, that did not take a, um, a long amount of time for them to complete. However, I do fear that social desirability bias of participants completing or responding in a more favorable way to um, questions regarding their um, cancer risk related behaviors based on what they know is correct and not actually on what they uh, engage in or what the behavior is. There is also a strength of academic and community partnership for recruitment. So prior to beginning recruitment for my study, I did reach out to many organizations that host recreational sporting events across a, a wide range of different sporting types. Um, I found that many of them were excited to participate and were open to sharing information about how to participate in my study. However, there was one uh, that was also one of the larger organizations that had more of a reach that was not as responsive. And so I find that to be possibly from um, um, and maybe concerns of what's truly in it for them. So with being able to collect the data and have results that are significant and then moving forward to be able to share this information, I do hope to engage more recreational sporting organizations that do have a large reach of participants, particularly in this age range, um, to begin um, either future um, research studies or also intervention um, studies as well. So there are a few implications of the research itself. Um, the first, I believe, as it relates to future research, will be um, a continued look at technology-based intervention. So I was able to reach um, a large number of recreational sporting athletes, again, via social media recruitment. And I think it would be important as well to explore social media as a way to intervene on uh, these cancer risk-related behaviors as well. Um, also of interest um, that I didn't expect, expect to find from the study, um, Although it was exclusion criteria for any participant that reporting having a previous diagnosis of cancer to be excluded from the analyses, um, I did find it interesting that there, there was a number of uh, young adults between 18 to 39 who did report having a previous diagnosis. Um, as well as it related to um, cancer screening, um, there was 31% who had undergone some type of cancer screening. So I also see an area of potential research to explore um, either cancer survivorship um, or more on repeat screening among younger um, adults or adults younger than age 50. As it relates to practice, again, uh, cancer prevention should start early. And many of these behaviors um, are actually picked up at a younger age, such as alcohol and smoking. So beginning early and early um, to uh, advocate for prevention. And then lastly, at a local policy level, looking to advocate that so, um, sporting events or these recreational sporting um, organizations continue um, to prohibit the use of alcohol, smoking, but then also to offer healthy food options for individuals, not just the athletes, but also spectators who are attending these events. <clears throat> As it relates to career goals, um, I do have a growing interest now in the use of social data technologies for health promotion. So I'm looking to explore that more and I'm also applying for um, postdoctoral training opportunities. So I have as acknowledgement here my dissertation committee from the University of South Florida, in particular Dr. Guede at the Moffitt Cancer um, Center for his advice and guidance. And then I would also have to thank um, Dr. Solomon, Dr. Dorn for your help as it related to a few conversations and continue to develop the instrument and my mother who is in attendance today. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.